This is what happens when you don't prepare yourself properly. Great. Um, what are your mammoths? Hello everyone, um, I'm Zina and this is Beating Around the Books. Um, I would like to do a sort of kind of tentative March TBR. Um, I decided that there was no need to do any sort of Friday reads or wrap ups or whatever because yeah it's quite ironic that in the month that I decided to start a booktube channel I basically ended up with a huge book hangover which left me sort of incapable of picking my next read for like four or five days in between and the book in question was Hamlet which also prompted me to not want to pick up anything in between but at the same time making me read it really 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 slowly so I have nothing to talk about all the books I read before Hamlet I've already talked about Hamlet I've talked about other than that I think I've only finished one middle grade um, fantasy novel which was on script so I just listened to an audiobook which was quite cute what was it called Starfell I think I'm gonna put the author's name here because I did not prepare but it you know it's nothing of note in that sense it was just a cute little sort of palette cleanser type book like some middle grade books I feel may have you know made me be more in love with it or whatever you know were more whimsical or whatever where you kind of feel like a child again or something this one it was all right it, i think if i had been you know 10 or so when i read it i think i would have loved it this way for me it was yeah it was all right seriously two minutes in and we've still not actually got to anything that i was talking about okay so that's just what it is haven't read that much I have since picked up, finally, hang on, again, not good prep, good preparation is, uh, I've since picked up in the typical mood readers fashion that I, that I have going on, I did not pick up Another Country by James Baldwin and instead opted for um, We Need New Names by No Violet Bulawayo, which I have not got in very far, I think just over 50 pages, I'm enjoying it so far. But I think I just need a more, I need a longer, a dedicated time to read it in, you know, a longer chunk. Because basically I spent the week sitting in waiting rooms and reading, you know, little bits of it and then getting interrupted by some doctor or whatever. And so, yeah, I, it, it hasn't got me enthralled yet, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm still hoping very much because... It came highly recommended from, um, oh, I don't know what her name is, books by Lenis. should probably check what her name is, but yeah, came highly recommended by her, it sounded really interesting, and so, um, yeah, that is my very, very late Black History Month book, although, I mean, it's not really about Black American history, certainly not, but <laughs> that's beside the point, okay. So, for March, my TBR, I, uh, we, as we all are aware, I think, March is absolutely mad, mad. It's, it's, it's complete mayhem with all the readathons, and I felt slightly overwhelmed hearing about them all, and I'm sure I've not even heard about, about all of them, so I've decided to only commit to two. Um, the first one is the March of the Mammoths, which is hosted by Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse, um, Lukash at A Cruel Reader's Thesis, and Alex at Big Al Books. Sorry, I'm reading this from off my screen because <laughs> I wasn't, I didn't trust myself to remember. Um, yes, so, and the book that I have chosen for this is Michelle Faber's The Crimson Petal and The White. Um, this has just over 800 pages, I think 840 or so, so it does qualify. It's quite a chunky thing, um, and I've had it for a while. Oh, 
I only just re realized that it was that apparently this used to be an arc. Well, I picked it up in Oxfam. Um, apparently, I have an arc of this. Yeah. So um, I don't. I can't remember exactly where I saw it first. It may have been Jen Campbell's um, channel where she had this amazing chat with Michelle Faber in her garden last summer sort of socially distanced chat with the author and he seemed I don't know he just seemed incredibly likable they were not talking about this book in particular but she had at one point previous to that mentioned that this was one of her favorite historical novels and I do like a good historical romp so um yeah I'll give it a try uh, plus I will be going into hospital next week which leaves me thinking I may have very a lot of time on my hands to read, but also, of course, I'm a bit trepidatious that I may actually not feel up to much reading at all. So we shall see how that goes. So that's March of the Mammoths. And the second one that I'm committing to is March of the Moderns, which is hosted by Margaret Pinar. Um, I'll leave links to all the channels, of course. Um, and we are also doing a buddy read with Margaret Pinar and then two other people and I've again failed to check out who they are and whether they have channels um, which I will obviously remedy and put some stuff in here just making this harder for myself in the edit well anyway what we are going to be buddy reading is The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnim Arnim? yes Arnim <laughs> um, I'd heard about this maybe last year on Mel's channel, Mel's Book and Ad Adventures. And then um, again, randomly came across it in Oxfam. I do love the absolute randomness of Oxfam. Um, back when you could still browse in shops, of course. Um, especially considering that I'm in Germany, my Oxfam only has one shelf that has English fiction and to, you know, repeatedly come across certain books that are mentioned on here is always, um, I don't know, an extra ad an extra layer of added joy, apart from, you know, the whole I get to buy relatively affordable books. Okay, so those are the two things I am committing to. Um, and apparently I think that we have also somewhat, I think Margaret Pina is super onto the whole organization of this Readathon, it's brilliant. Um, she's got like the spreadsheet to, you know, find buddy potential buddy readers and um, all sorts of stuff. And she's contacted everyone, and she wants to do what was it? Yeah, she wants to host these sort of live discussions um, that will go on YouTube. Um, so I think that will happen at the end of May. No, not May, March. I can't remember, I think it was the 28th. We'll see how all of that works. Um, I've never done this, obviously, but I think it's very exciting. Okay, so, and then lastly, these are the things I'm committing to. And then lastly, the third thing that I'm kind of interested in, but you're just not sure if I can actually squeeze anything in, is the Irish Readathon. And actually, I was thinking, what do I even have on my shelves by Irish authors? And um, it, it dawned on me that I wasn't quite sure that, about a lot of the authors that I have on here, where they're from, you know, unless I really, you know, it's like a well-known author or whatever. I didn't know, so I had to actually go and look. Well, anyway, so I thought, I found one, and I cannot remember when on earth I bought this. Although, actually, it may, may tell me. No. No, I don't think it has any date. Anyway. So, um, but I must have bought this new here in Stuttgart, which is where English books are relatively expensive. I bought this, The Marble Collector by Cecilia Ahern. I've never read anything by her. Um, and when I look at it now, I sometimes wonder what on earth made me interested in it in the first place. Maybe it was the cover, because it's quite cute. I mean, I normally also read a few pages, so I assume that past me, like the writing. Um, so um, I may give this one a go. Uh, but yeah, it's just one of those books you have picked up and then 
I've picked up and then just forgot about it. Just put it on the shelves and never thought about it again. And then the other option um, is a book that Sean the Book Maniac mentioned, uh, which is S Big Girl Small Town. I'm going to put it in here as well. By an Irish writer. Um, I'm assuming it's by a Northern Irish writer just because I listened to the uh, the preview of the audiobook and that was narrated by a Northern Irish woman who is uh, also one of the is also on the cast of Derry Girls which already endeared it to me because I love Derry Girls um, I'm not sure it may also just be set there and maybe written by somebody from the Republic of Ireland who knows I'm gonna maybe check this out uh, but that one um so he had said that it, sean had said that it was on script and then i was super excited went on to script and realized it is not available in my country um but i am considering after listening to the uh, audiobook sample i'm very much considering just using an audio audible credit on it because i actually have a few sitting in there unused anyway so one may, may as well right <laughs> pay for it instead of use the subscription service um yeah so that's the other one which i think is more than likely that i will just be listening to because i like to have an audiobook on the go anyway if you know if you're doing stuff household chores or in this in the case of the hospital visit i don't know if my eyes are getting tired um and then lastly <laughs> sort of joker um i would maybe just read another play in this oscar wilde volume of plays wait is it yes it is it's a volume of plays <laughs> importance of being earnest under the plays so i have read the importance of being earnest and a woman of no importance but there are others in here that i may want to have a look at and that's you know kind of also a nice quick read and usually very entertaining so I think I may not be over committing myself here. I mean, like I said, this isn't even a commitment, but I'm going to keep it in mind if I feel like something like this. Okay. Um, what else do I have to say? Oh, yes. Actually, I'm slightly awkward as well. I'm slightly, I'm very humbled. I woke up this morning to find that my tiny little channel had now got over a hundred subscribers, only just over. <laughs> but still, it was this whole, oh, it's three digits now. Oh my goodness. And how did that happen? It was like, I only started this three weeks ago. I mean, I have no other experience, but I feel like this was quite quick. I mean, not least, I'm sure, you know, most of this is due to all these lovely shout outs that I got. But my goodness, I'm flabbergasted sort of you know i don't know what to say thank you very much for subscribing and you know watching the videos um and i don't know quite what i should be do if i should do something i feel like i should do something like to celebrate it and i've seen other people you know when they reach milestones um which i think you know the first three digit number seems like a milestone too say something about um they're doing you know these q a videos or whatever and i thought mm, that seems rather presumptuous that, that you know anybody would even have a question so maybe you can let me know whether you think that is a good idea or not <laughs> and if not i'll just i don't know come up with something different um yeah so we'll see i don't know if i'll be uploading next week uh, just because of the whole hospital thing um, might mull over the whole idea of this 100 subscriber thing and um, yeah if not yeah I'll, I'll upload when I feel you know in the capacity to do so again um, yeah so thank you so much for watching again please let me know about the whole Q&A idea, which seems really silly. I don't know. And um, let me know what you thought of these books. Also, if you have any other northern, not northern, just Irish uh, novels that you want to recommend, or 
actually, this is the last thing that I forgot to mention. I, I need to start making notes. Anyway, so the last thing I wanted to mention, not only did I get into this weird book hangover, I also experienced an audiobook slump at the same time. Not because, I don't know, not because I didn't want to listen to any audiobooks, but I just could not for the life of me figure out what I wanted to listen to. Like I was just looking through all the sort of things that are on script and things I had saved that I was interested in and nothing spoke to me. I don't know why. Um, so if you have any audiobook recommendations, either that are available on script or on Audible, um, please let me know because I do love a good audiobook. Okay, this has gone on way too long again. I thought I might do this in 10 minutes, clearly not. Um, so thanks so much for your patience and um, bye bye. Yeah, of course, that's how you start a video, by taking a sip of your drink first. Anyway, goodness, the corona hair, which is beyond ridiculous by now. I haven't had a haircut since October 2019.